Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant on the last Kumite, not Kumite, Kumite, uh, and this is about the most 80s thing I've seen in like 20 years. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys. Books 1 through 13 available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. So the Kumite, I think, is a fight to the death or near death. And um, they, they offer a ton of money, and it's in an eastern country. Uh, but the guys are offered it, and they don't want to go. But they sweeten the deal by kidnapping their various wives and daughters, I think. So this guy is the, they don't really make it clear, but somebody's clearly kidnapped and they have to fight. They have to fight. So uh, the, the bearded man, I guess it's Mathis Landwehr, is the main dude with Cynthia Rothrock and a few others. I don't know him. Um, and he's going to fight in the last Kumite and he's going to win. And the song they play, I wish I could play it for you. It's the most 80s things I... Yeah, you've ever heard. It's a, it's like, you've got the power kind of 80s music. Uh, it's very funny. Ooh, a lot of executive producers. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's a pretty good, pretty not not the record, 23, but that's pretty, pretty big, 11. Um... Is that anybody in the cast? No. I'm not saying it. Yeah, so uh, who wrote this thing? Story by Sean David Lowe. Do they have a director? There's no director. Are you kidding me? There's no director? Shut up, Joan. I'm trying to figure this out. Got a producer, an executive producer. No. A Ross W. Clarkson film. He's probably the... Let me play it and see. No, I don't have it. Oh, gosh, I clicked it. So, yeah, I mean, these movies are always sort of the same. They gather a bunch of fighters, in this case, sort of crookedly. <laughs> this is the guy who runs it, and this is his undefeated fighter. I think he called him Drago or something like that. These are the women he's kidnapped, apparently, to make them fight. This is his... His friend, another fighter, he's like, I can't beat, I can't beat the head boss, whatever he is. Uh, don't worry, you won't have to. Uh, I'll do it. But of course, you know, somebody's going to get killed in this. And he's, <laughs> he's just endlessly scowling through the whole film, I assume. I don't know, I assume these guys are fighters or whatever. He's probably the one actor, right? He's probably been in these movies before. Uh, Cynthia Rothrock, I know I've heard that name before. She's been in these kinds of movies. Um, so he's going to train. He's going to win. So first act, they offer up the kumite to the various guys. And they're like, a kumite? No, I'm, I'm desperate for money, but not death desperate. Well, it's all right. And then he goes home and his wife is kidnapped. And they find a ransom note. And if you don't show up to the kumite, that's it for your wife or whoever. Whoever it is. It's someone named Bree. So he goes. Second act, he's on the island, and he gets the old uh, ultimatum, like, so you've got a message. Don't worry, she's safe. I want to see her. And then he sees her, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, we'll let her go if, as long as you fight. Um, and so he's forced to fight. And then, uh, uh, you know, it's some island somewhere, some hidden fortress or whatever. So they train, and it's going to be a long second act. The problem with these movies is the action doesn't take up that much time, and, it, and you can get numb to it if you have too much. You can't have, like, 40 minutes of solid action, although I guess you could. <coughs> Has anybody ever tried it? It'd be kind of cool. But you'd probably be numb at the end of it, and it probably would make no sense. Anyhow, there's going to be, like, training and confrontations and a couple of fights a couple of early fights don't really matter a couple of guys you don't know get killed and he's like oh this isn't right you know stop the fight because yeah, he's the hero 
and uh, and a couple of guys he beats again. You don't care about. He spares them, but you know the Kumite guys maybe kill him anyway, just to make them extra evil. And then finally, there's the final fight, and he wins against that big dude. But then the head dude doesn't want to pay off. Maybe pulls a gun, or maybe he's going to fight too. And there's a big battle with him, or like you know a bunch of other guys, even though he's. He's already just spent the whole half the movie trying to beat Drago or whatever his name is. And then he's extra tired in the third act for that final fight. And they have to escape the island or the castle or whatever the hell it is. <coughs> All the while that song playing. You got the power. You gonna fight. <laughs> whatever it is. I don't know. It's very 80s. I'm just telling you. The most 80s thing I've heard in a long time. Like it could be on Cobra Kai. The first episode. That's how 80s it is, Joan. Joan, you don't remember the 80s. You're, you're a dog. And she was, she's too young. Too young to remember the 80s, Joan. You're a 2000 pup. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, would I see this movie? I kind of want to see it. I don't think it'll be good. I have to be honest. Because these movies rarely are good. The acting's always sort of so-so. The action's good. So, you kind of end up going... How much more of this do I want to sit through? I want to see the fight, you know? There's a lot of guys turn their head and blood gushing out. That can get old real quick. It really, uh, this movie really depends a lot on the stunt coordination. You know, if that's good, uh, it's a good movie. If the stunts suck, then it, or they're boring, or they're kind of all the same, then it's kind of... So, as, you know, in terms of the plot... I don't really think you're going to watch it for the plot unless they pull a rabbit out of their butt last minute and do something really crazy. But, I, you know, I wouldn't go to the theater for it. I, it. It made me a little nostalgic. I would probably watch it on streaming if it was on. It wouldn't be high on my list, but if you like these kinds of movies, I think it would be fun, especially if you're my age and you want a, you want a little taste of that, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme kind of blood sport movie that's that's what it reminds me of one of those kinds of movies so uh the last kumite rated r probably for adult situations uh here's the write-up let's read that when karate champion michael rivers mathis where are you wins the last tournament of his career shady businessman ron hall mathis hughes uh, Matthias Hughes, excuse me. Mathis and Matthias. What are, the, what are the odds two guys in the movie with names like that? Anyhow, he offers them the opportunity to fight the illegal, deadly Kumite in Bulgaria with the world's best martial artist. Michael declines, only to find out later that his daughter, Bree, so it's his daughter, had been kidnapped in order, and in order to rescue her, he is left with no other option but to fight the deadly tournament. When he finally gets to Bulgaria, he finds out that he's not the only fighter whose loved one got taken. Now, in order to beat the undefeated Kumite champion Draco, oh, it's Draco, Michael trains, I mean, it sounds so similar to Drago, you might as well have said Drago. Michael trains with Master Lauren, Billy Banks, and Draco's former sensei, Julie Jackson, Cynthia Rothrock, but it'll what, will it be enough for him to win the tournament and save his daughter's life? Yes, yes it will. You shouldn't ask that question in a synopsis. Um, so, the movie, I think, is directed by Ross Clarkson. They don't mention that credit, but it seems to be it. All right. So, yeah. You want to see dudes getting punched in the face? This is your film. The Last Kumite. Anyhow, that's it for me, Tony D. And Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. Thanks to all who came out to Bridgeton first for Maker's Day uh, on Commerce Street there at the Hope Loft. That's what they call it. They bought a ton of books. Thank you so much. Uh, and then to those who came out to the Irish Market on Aco Ave in Waterford, New Jersey which I just left a few hours ago. I was, I was a rocking good time. Uh, fun, fun stuff. A little windy. Couldn't put up my backdrop, which I was kind of bummed about, but I got there late. Uh, next up, I'll be at uh, Parker's Bend Retirement Community, I think it's called. I think that's Tuesday, 
Uh, more to come. And, oh, don't forget the live stream tomorrow where we do it live at 7. It's going to be some kind of Irish theme. I don't think we've done an Irish theme on the, on the live stream, but we'll do something. It'll be fun. Hope to see you there. We'll see you.